Hey everybody, this is Jim Neeb. Um, I wanted to give a quick update on my Rapid Change ATC system. Um, by now I had planned on finishing my testing and doing a final summary review, but um, I'm sort of on hold on that. I did about half of the cycles that I planned to do. I probably did 50 or 60 right now, but I paused because I had a couple of cross-thread events and um, the good news was they didn't do any damage to the threads on my spindle or the collet nut, not even leave a, a slight burr or anything that you could feel with your fingernails. So I was kind of happy about that, that I got the opportunity to see if it really does damage because a lot of people um, had concerns about that, including me. But on the downside, the owner of the company said, well, you really shouldn't get even two out of 50. Uh, he said, I've only had like one or two in all of my testing for the last year, which was a lot more than I did. So he wanted to go back and make some fine tuning to the process of, of the bringing spindle in and approaching the collet nut and, and tightening it. So I'm waiting for a software update on that. So what I'm going to cover today is um, a couple of people have asked me, what does the part look like that grabs the collet nut? Why would, it, why would it last very long? It looks like plastic. Some people even notice that that little part is 3D printed. And they thought, well, just like I thought, that shouldn't really stand up to this kind of abuse. Well, it just so happens that I made a mistake when I first started using this and accidentally had my spindle speed set at around 6,000 RPM. Um, my VFD had a minimum setting in the software. That's why it wouldn't go lower. The speed is supposed to be between 1,000 and 1,500 RPM, kind of depending on your collet size. So I was way over spinning this thing when I was approaching it, and I plunged into the first three pockets quite <clears throat> quite a few times uh, in the in the testing before I finally contacted the owner and said, "Hey, that's something's wrong." And he looked at it and said, "Yeah, you're you're running it too fast." And I, so I figured out why, but I did do a little bit of damage, so I've got some replacements. Uh, from rapid change to to put in today, so I thought I'd show uh, what they look like, uh, how easy they are to change out, and then um, kind of compare, you know, what they looked like after I damaged them. Because I think um, this was a pretty good testament to really how tough these parts are if you use them correctly and not like I did, and, and you know, go in there at five times the speed you're supposed to. They uh, they really don't da get damaged even though they're uh they seem to be uh you know just well they are 3d printed parts and and it seems like they shouldn't stand up to that but they're actually really good quality parts as near as i can tell they're very hard tough plastic so i was kind of surprised so let's get into it tear this thing apart and see what it looks like inside so first if we look down into the system you can see uh here's a pocket where the collet uh i've got a eighth inch bit in there and the collet nut um, and the collet and these are the three empty pockets and you can see they're spring loaded down in here and here's one of the little balls and here's one so these are the three pockets I damaged um, these are what these parts look like outside so underneath them there's a spring to allow the uh, the collet to basically spring off as it's unthreading when it's re being removed this allows it to compress and come off of the spindle and then this is the part that grips the collet so it's it's basically a 3d printed part with a ball bearing you know at 120 degrees apart all the way around uh, that's the part i damaged I, I spun that so fast and jammed them in there that these balls got pushed back into the plastic. Um, and again, that was because I was running five times faster than I was supposed to and didn't realize it. And I, I probably hammered those things at least 20 times in the process of trying to figure out what was wrong before I finally realized I was going too fast. So um, that was extreme abuse. They actually still work, but the tolerances aren't right. They're, they're not protruding as far as they are supposed to be. Um, I've tried to scratch this, you know, poke on this plastic with some sharp objects and it's, I'm not a 3D printer expert, but I'm, this part is really well made compared to some other ones that I've, um, seen with 3D printing. So I don't know what kind of printers they use and I honestly have no idea what kind of plastic this is, but compared to say the HDPE plastic that I machine on my 
CNC here quite a bit. Uh, this is much, much harder um, than the HDPE or even the PVC sheets that I cut once in a while. So this is a very hard and basically I know it's very strong because of the abuse that uh, I put them through and they still, for the most part, held together. So let's take this apart and see what those look like. Um, so basically this top deck comes off just by removing all these screws. So I'm going to shut the video off um, while I go at taking all of these out. Okay, so I took the top plate off here. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just HDPE. Uh, that's what it feels like to me, which is a nice, a real tough material. Uh, good choice for the top here. So these are the pockets. They just pop out of here. Um, and then you can see the spring underneath here. These these are different sizes for different collet sizes. I have a ER20 size, so this is the ER21. So uh, I can feel, now that the lid's off, I can really easily feel in these first three that I really abused, there's the, the, the ball has been pushed into the plastic here um, and it's not protruding very much. Like I said, I can still actually uh, install and remove a nut with this um, if I want to, but it slips a little bit more. And so I thought it would be best to replace these um, before proceeding with any testing. I can definitely tell the, the difference. These back three um, that I didn't use in the beginning all feel great yet. Um, they feel just like these brand new ones. So I think I'm going to just uh, replace all six of them and I'm gonna keep these back ones for spares just because um, I wanna kinda, of, now that I've Played with a little bit. I want to start with a fresh run, and I'll do a full set of reliability testing um, on all of them. So these here, first three, I'm going to put aside because they're damaged. And so that's all you really have to do to replace these. Um, just take these screws off. Four of the screws, these two, and these two go all the way through, and that's how the, this unit bolts down. Um, in my case, I've use some of these really long number nine screws to screw it into this riser block. I, I did the riser block because you can see I bored down there uh, a long ways and that allows me to use a really long bit like this as I can go down all the way through the rapid change which has a hole in the bottom um, into the wood underneath and that so I'm not restricted in bit length really um, that way so um, so that's what that's it. It's it's a very simple system, um, but it works so far. It's, it's worked really well. I haven't really found anything wrong with it. Like I said, I haven't finished the reliability testing and my torque testing. Those are really the two remaining things. But because the the process of how you approach the nut and tighten it are affected um, or, or will affect the torque and the the repeatability and all that significantly or, or potentially could. I want to start over when I get the new software release from them. So I am going to install these and then and then wait for that software update and we'll talk about um, my results later than after I get all that done. All right, if you have any questions, just feel free to throw them down in the comments below. Thanks.